Hello, good day, Bruce. Good morning, Lance. How's it going? All right. Good. We might have a small group today. <laughs> might just be us, so we might be able to keep it short. Um, oh, yeah, that's right. Um, Hacken was going to tell us next month where he's working now. Yeah, and next month being this month, right? Must be, yeah. Yeah. And then uh, Rodolfo is traveling. I think he's in Thailand at this point. So oh, good wow. for him. All right, well, let's get started. Uh, hello, everybody. This is the 2023, February 6th, uh, Aries did v 2 working group meeting. Uh, and I should remind you of the Hyperledger antitrust policy and the Hyperledger code of conduct. And uh, we have a small group today. Please, uh, Bruce, if you'd like, you can add yourself to the attendees. It's up to you. And yeah, let's just go through and do some updates. Or I can even add you if you want me to, Bruce. It's up to you. Um, Zoom isn't showing me the chat today. Oh, yeah. Oh, there, me... oh, there, oh, there it is. It just rearranged. It's OK. I can do it. OK. Yeah, I should also post the link to today's, uh, let's see here. Yeah. Yep, there's the link to today's meeting. And, okay, uh, so, uh, am I in edit mode? Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. I don't have anything much extra to say right now about the Aries agent test harness. Uh, I was working through uh, it. it. It naturally wants to spin up uh, a Vaughn network and a Tails server and some of these other things. Um, and I'm trying to sift through how much of that stuff uh, would actually be needed um, for like an agent that's focused specifically on Didcom v2 uh, and not as focused on um, especially like indie um, based things but of course the Aries agent test harness has to do some of the um, well it needs some things uh, some some supporting um, ecosystem in order to you know execute uh, its tests so I'm kind of trying to sift through through that uh, and um, well, I was super busy this week, so I didn't get to spend a ton of time on it. But hopefully at some point I can report that uh, I've been able to run at least a single Didcom V2 test with an agent that is not an Aries agent uh, at all or Aries, uh, well, what we would consider a classic Aries agent uh, in terms of, you know, Occupy and AFJ, but uh, this agent would be something else. So, yeah. Cool. Yeah. So that would be great. Yeah. Um, is there anything else, uh, Bruce, that you want to give in terms of updates? Scanning through, see if anything, if I have anything else. Yeah, anything on Picos? Actually, we have, uh, just so you know, we have a customer that is interested in uh, Internet of Things, uh, IoT devices, uh, and did come. Oh. And so we mentioned the Picos project. We, we said we didn't know a ton about it, but we know uh, a group that's working on it and that it might be uh, nice to look into. 
Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, the students have, have had made some progress, but um, nothing I can readily articulate. They're still at the same point that's shown here. Okay. It's just they're not as stuck at that point as they were. <laughs> so they, they see they're right clear to move forward now. Okay. Yeah, very good. And the work they're doing, I see this. Uh, oh, let's see, can I do that like that? Yeah. Um, you, I guess we had noted that this is DIDCOM V1. It's not even all the way to DIDCOM V1. It's, okay. Um, it predates that. It's partway through AIP1. Okay. <clears throat> the approach we took was to um, <clears throat> was to use uh, VC as a service on top of um, on top of uh, the trust over IP layer two. So we didn't implement any of layer three, but there are services uh, in particular, we work with Trinsic that will provide, that provide an API for, um, <clears throat> for issuing VCs and for uh, providing proof requests and verifying the credentials that are provided in response to that. And so there's no code in this repo for or doing anything with VCs, but it is a pretty complete implementation of layer two. Okay, great. At, at the at the DIDCOM V1 with the DIDCOM V1 kind of packaging and so forth. Okay, very good. Sorry guys for joining late. Does that mean that the Morning. people have to be connected to the internet? <clears throat> Picos by their nature are connected to the okay. internet. Yes, when a Pico is born, it immediately presents uh, a fairly rich API from from birth, and then you just extend it by adding rule sets to it, then you enrich its API until it does what you want it to do. And one of the things you can do to enrich its API is to install the code Lance was just showing uh, into the Pico. At that point, it becomes a capable uh, uh, layer two agent. Nice. So there's like a base API and then you extend that functionality. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, very good. And I didn't know about the uh, association with Trinsic. So that's very cool too. Uh, they were just the vendor we chose for VC as a service. Okay. Gotcha. I haven't seen them in any Aries meetings for the last year or so yeah so I, I i think they're content with what they've implemented they're able to use it with their customers and so forth okay so i i don't know that they have any plans to go to didcom v2 at all i'm i'm not saying they don't but i'm saying that i'm unaware of any such plans yeah is it okay for me to note them here i'm sure they would be would be happy to uh, have a mention yeah, good. I, I I just talked to Riley recently. Oh yeah. Um, just yeah. to touch base with him, uh, and I, I was noting to him that, um, because I had gotten spun up into this community, especially the Aries community, over the last year, it it was like I was seeing the fingerprints of Trinsic all over. Uh, oh yeah. All over the place, but then at the same time, I was never meeting any Trinsic people <laughs> you know in in the meetings uh, you know while i was getting to know indicio and animo and and you and you know many others uh and so i i said you know i, I kept telling myself you know eventually I'll, I'll come in contact with the Trinsic folks and i had actually met with uh scott or i met scott at um the last iaw um it's one of he's one of the developers if you don't know him but um i have not met scott uh, yeah, so then, you know, I, I kind of, in my brain, it was like, okay, I, at some point, I need to reach out to Riley and, you know, say hi. Uh, I had actually learned some stuff from him in a, in a recording uh, interview that he uh, had done, you know, over a year ago. Uh, and so, oh. yeah, yeah, it was cool to touch base with him. Yeah, yeah, that's, that, that's cool. Yeah, they were originally street cred. Okay. I and, didn't know that. and it was the first company that uh, was based on 
on the technology that predated DINCOM V1. They, they, were, the, they were one of the very first mobile agents and they implemented things as they were at the time when I implemented Acapico. And, and, but, but they were a for, for-profit company at that time already. Gotcha. Okay. I, th- I think that was September or so of 2019. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. They Very work cool. in the shadows. <laughs> 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 they they work in everything from behind. <laughs> <laughs> they certainly are in our shadows. Oh, yeah. 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 Very good. Uh, good. Okay. So, um, is there, let's see, I, I don't know if, do we want to talk any more about, um, well, I, I don't know anything about KRL. Um, uh, K, KRL is, is just the programming language that is used um, in PICOs. Okay. It, um, it transpiles down to JavaScript. Gotcha. So every rule set becomes a JavaScript module that the that the engine that that provides runtime support for the picos um, uh, knows how to how to request those modules interesting so when an event uh, comes into a pico uh, the engine um, resuscitates it because a pico is primarily spends most of its life as data just you can think of it as a json a big json the pico engine brings it in and um, finds out which rules need to need to be uh, considered for the event, and and then puts the pico to work by 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 requiring the compiled rule sets and and executing them. And then when it's done, the pico goes back to sleep. In a, in a busy environment, the pico engine provides a queue for each pico so that it it handles the events one at a time. Um, As a result of that behavior, uh, the the KRL programmer never has to deal with critical sections or worry about concurrency because the engine will be giving it one thing at a time to do, which it does to completion and then goes to sleep as it were. Well, that's pretty pretty much ideal for most things that agents do. Generally, uh, the agent needs to needs to is alerted to something that's happening and uh, takes care of it, and then it just remains, as Alex said, in the background. Yeah. How do picos handle like the key management? Like, do you create the the private keys on the device? Like, do you use a service for that? Like, how does that get managed from a people's perspective? Out of curiosity. Mm-hmm. That's that's a great question, Alex. So the um, the the picos are. Let's see, you've got the the actual rule set there. I think. Um, no, I don't see it there. Um, there's there's a rule set that um, that. Uh, that associates a did. Oh, you're you're in KRL. Would you mind going up one and then down to next? Okay. Because the Pico engine has has different versions. Yes. Go ahead and look at that rule set right there. Let me uh, um, also make it a little bigger here. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So just uh, scroll down towards the bottom of it. It's there's very little code involved here because it uses. Um, what we called at that time the URSA module to pack and unpack. You can see an unpack happening at line 22, 23. Um, and there's only one rule in the rule set, which is to create and save a did. And um, on line 33, so when a did is requested, um, we get the channel identifier and we uh, we created a did for it. And that happens in line 41. Uh, The new did function is called. 
and we store it in an entity variable of a Pico. Picos are persistent. And so we store the did that is for this event channel identifier in, uh, in a map uh, of dids. And so that's stored by the Pico engine in the database that it maintains um, behind the scenes, as it were. You've heard of serverless programming, I, I assume. Big fan um, of it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. So serverless doesn't mean there isn't a server. It means that you don't have to worry about it. And in a similar right. way, ECOs are databaseless. It's not that there isn't a database. It's that you don't have to you have to select it, buy it, configure it, connect to it, and so forth. Uh, the Pico just has persistent data. So you can see that happening in line um, in line forty one, where we say the entity variable dids, um, indexed by this event channel identifier, contains the new did. Yeah, it's like a channel will be like a connection. That's yes. Uh huh. Yep. And so right. at the very at the very top of this, let's see new did. Let's scroll down a bit to see the new. Oh, sorry, up <laughs> the new did function. There it is, right there. Um, line seven. And so at line eight, we ask uh, Ursa, which is some JavaScript code that uh, that we build into the Pico engine. We ask it to generate the did, and it does so, and then we store it away. I don't know if that answers your question, Alex. Yes, yeah, that makes sense. I guess uh, the question that then I have is like, what's the difference between a Pico agent and a Pico? Like, how does the uh, what's the architecture? There? Like, so there's like a database, like in serverless. Like you said, there's like one big server that like takes track of like events and then spins up code. How does that work in the Pico case? Is there like one main agent that like does the coordination between different smaller devices? Um, so you have as many Picos as as you need. And each Pico uh, behaves like a, like a very small virtual machine. And when I say very, I mean so small that you wouldn't even think of spinning up Linux on it. It's much smaller than that. Um, and um, it, it is supported at runtime by the Pico engine that, that happens to be hosting it at the moment. In, in principle, a Pico can move from one Pico engine to another. If you think of a Pico as being a bundle of data and um, and and process, the the data is um, is a very a very large JSON object, um, and that data could could be could be uh, reconstituted or reanimated on a different Pico engine. Um, the data the J very large JSON would include the keys. And the dids and so forth. Got it, got it. I think. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. The architecture of people makes sense. I wasn't that familiar with it. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Lance, for facilitating with the slides, as it were. Oh, yeah. Happy to. This is uh, fascinating. I, I honestly know very little about um, IoT or, yeah, it, it, it's. Uh, it would be very interesting for me, you know, to dive deeper into this. So, the the connection between Picos and IoT is both historical. That's what they were invented for by by Phil Windley, um, but not necessarily. Uh, so, a, a Pico is kind of ideal for an IoT device because it generally doesn't communicate um, with its handler very often, and so a, a Pico can can just hold. Uh, the data that it saw last, or it can hold a month's worth of data that it saw recently. Um, but Picos can also be used for general purpose event uh, driven systems. And that's where the agents, where Picos as agents becomes handy. Because you can have multiple entities that are, are uh, running at the same time each represented by a Pico and they can be communicating uh, over secure channels. And some of them will some of them will also be device shadows or digital twins of IoT devices. Others will be representing persons or 
um, or other things or ideas or concepts. So. And so that communication layer is, uh, you would essentially like it to be DIDCOM V2 or are we talking something different? Yes, that's that's the connection to this meeting. That's what uh, Phil, Phil would like the, um, uh, the communication to be uh, up a layer. Uh, currently communication between PICOs is done over the, over the channels that they open up to each other. Um, you know how on, on, a, on a, uh, a classic Linux server, you open up ports to the outside world um, and you're limited to what, 64,000 or so ports. Uh, a PICO has an unbounded number of channels that it can open up to, to the outside world. And best practice is to give a different channel to every user and purpose uh, so that the same PICO might, if it's used by a thousand peop, uh, people or other processes, each one of those has its own channel into the PICO. And if one ever misbehaves, you can simply delete that channel and the other, the other users continue on happily, uh, but the one mis, miscreant is, uh, is blocked out. Interesting. And, and uh, Phil would like uh, PICOs to communicate with each other and and other agents using DIDCOM v2 um, uh, built on top of, of that. So um, in the DID document, um, the endpoint would include a channel identifier to reach the PICO, but every communication would be a DIDCOM uh, message. Interesting. Yeah, very good. And I think I see that Phil, I don't know if he has a new book uh, coming out, but he's doing a presentation with Indicio at the end of February. That I was... Yes, yes, his, his book uh, should be out by then. Great. On digital identity. Very good. Great. Okay, anything else uh, that we want to talk about in terms of Pico or Internet of Things? Okay, good. Uh, just scanning here to think if I have any updates. Uh, I was super busy last week, so I did not attend the Akapai meeting. Uh, I think I caught just a little bit of the AFJ meeting, but not much. You you were mentioned in the Aries meeting. Okay. Uh, a lot, something along the lines of Sam Curran saying, um, if Lance or Rhoda were here, they could tell you more. But uh... <laughs> something to do with the V2, probably. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I didn't speak up because I didn't consider myself an authority on the topic. But... Yeah, fair. So, yeah. Okay. Although at this point, you're probably in the top 10 in the world. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, okay. Um, there is movement in, and maybe we should do, are we listing the trust over IP? Let's see. No, let's add that to... Trust over IP, trust, spanning, protocol. Um, they're actually going into, well, they're, they, it looks like they're going to move into the proposal phase uh, where, you know, kind of beyond the introduction uh, phase of, you know, what is the trust spanning protocol or what, what's the goals of, of the trust spanning protocol. Uh, and they're, it, it sounds like, um, Sam Smith is going to present on Wednesday at the next meeting. Um, and there is a video. I should grab that link. Uh, that's, that's cool. It sounds like Daniel is bringing the various parties of his grand unified theory together. That's cool. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I saw that Sam joined the task force, like he's become like one of the co-chairs yeah. as well. And uh, yeah, I'm curious whenever Drummond is going to bring Daniel in from DWN and have them all have like a three-way conversation, the two Daniels and one Sam. Yes. Uh, yeah. Just to debate it over and uh, yeah, like do that. 
Okay, so he has a video presentation that everybody's supposed to watch that uh, it diagrams uh, his vision for the truss spanning layer. Uh, yeah, so no, TSP vision. So I just started watching it, but I haven't gotten through it. But it's uh, it, it's almost essential. They said essential to watch oh. at this point for, if you're going to attend that that Wednesday meeting. So, well, thank you for that. Put that there, and I'll I'll put it in the chat as well. Just oh, thank so you. Uh, yeah. Okay. Very good. Um, okay, we wanted to do a uh, Didcom V1 versus V2, which uh, I would have asked in the Wednesday um, meeting. But yeah, I was stuck in another meeting. So I never got to ask about that. And so anybody uh, have anything for to add for our simple explanation of the benefits of upgrading? Yeah, I'm not familiar with it from V1 specifically. I think it was just highly tight, like tightly coupled with the air, like Aries ecosystem. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, fair enough. Oh, that's that's interesting. That that uh, comment enlightens me a little bit. So you're saying that the Aries RFCs are tightly coupled with Didcom V1. Yeah, uh, well, like where... all the Aries RFCs are tightly coupled within the Aries ecosystem. Oh, okay. And like Didcom V2 is like a diff specification, so like it's less coupled. Oh, okay. So so its specification is in um, identity dot foundation. As opposed to the yeah to the, yeah oh great the thanks Alex yeah. thanks Alex that that really helps um, it sounds like <laughs> on this call we have people who know V two well and one person who knows V one only <laughs> so so I'm 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 very interested in this topic but because uh, uh, like my understanding is that like the did come V one messages and did come V two messages themselves the structures the headers like the those are should be similar I think like what changes is the encryption envelope most of ah. like the majority of it uh, oh thanks thanks yeah. Alex uh, yeah that that really that, helps that's my understanding but uh, yeah I'm not familiar with V one I haven't implemented it or so that's all everything that I've read and talked to people about. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you. Okay. Good. Um, in terms of AFP3, again, I wasn't at the uh, last Aries uh, working group. I don't know how much they talked about it and maybe expanded on it. Maybe I should open to see. Uh, see if that document has changed much i think about a week ago i started listing these uh, these aries rfcs that are being replaced or overtaken uh, by what did come oh. the did come v2 spec uh, but this list is pretty is much should be much longer than this um and it's it's a little bit difficult to kind of ferret out because didcom v2 well because didcom covers so much or touches so many different parts uh it's a little bit difficult to kind of sift through well what should i what should i include in this list and what shouldn't i <laughs> there's some obvious things that i haven't put in here yet like uh, the out of band um 2.1 or 2 2.0 there's a 1.0 uh, right. for the aries rfcs um yeah so more work needs to be done here but i i kind of tried to start enumerating uh the list of things well that's 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 great work um actually it what would be really uh helpful would be to see maybe a two column presentation so probably that would mean that this note would refer to a, um, to a, a different page, but okay. um, where on the left, you would see um, the DIDCOM V2 spec for something. And on the right, you would see the DIDCOM V2 spec for that same thing. 
Okay. As you did. I mean, it, it was very, it kind of uh, clicked in my mind when I saw the, the, the five dash did com C did com V2. Saw the two links side by side. Yeah. Because uh, Aries RFC uh, five has uh, an explanation of did com. And that's the Aries uh, and DIDCOM V1 spec for DIDCOM. And then the Identity Foundation has, um, has a, diff a, a different explanation of DIDCOM. Yeah. So it'd be interesting to see them side by side. And then of course, Trust Ping 1 and Trust Ping 2 would be side by side and so forth. Yeah. OK. Uh, yeah, I'll that would try be to... very that'd be very helpful for someone coming from V one to V two. Okay, that sounds good. And as as to the list you said of what should I put in here, I would think that AIP one or maybe AIP two would be a good um, a good list. Uh, in terms, of, okay, so basically uh, in terms listing... of things for the left hand side. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Very good. We, uh, okay. Let's see, any other uh, updates? Uh, maybe I, let's see, can I see a history? Yeah. Hmm, I'm not sure how to see a history of changes. I am not at all familiar with HackMD, but uh, <laughs> um, I wasn't aware of this view either. This is pretty cool. Ah, yes, with the, uh, the, the two panes on it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, when I work with MD in, in GitHub, I, I kind of mentally have this, right, with the edit <laughs> right. side versus, versus the view, preview side. This is cool to see them side by side. Side by side is a very powerful uh, uh, pedagogical uh, tool. Yeah. And I feel like VS Code also uh, does a nice job with that. Or am I thinking of IntelliJ? <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I started uh, coding um, on a teletype machine, and I have never made the jump to IDEs. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. OK, well, anyways, uh, just scrolling uh, through here. Yeah, uh, good work, Lance. We've been, we've been looking forward to, uh, to uh, to your putting that into into this, okay, yeah. That that I Thanks. think that was the thing we were talking about uh, in the Aries meeting last Wednesday. Gotcha. Was that you were going to be doing that? Right. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, maybe it might be worth bringing up the Aries working group notes and just seeing if. I was looking at the different AIP profiles and noticed that there's like a RFC 0587. It says that there's like a different between clicks and envelope that Timo came up with like two years ago, whenever like the different between clicks was still, uh, um, yeah, like regularly, like not implemented yet. So we can mention that too. Oh, you put that in the chat. Thank you. Ah, oh, that's that's that is terribly useful. Thank you, Alex. So these are the encryption envelopes that end up becoming part of Didcom V2 then. Yeah, that's kind of my understanding. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Uh, this is this is going to help this old dog learn a new trick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, in the spec, I think they call these out as profiles, right? Or is, uh, am I wrong about that? Let's see here. Yes, yes, yeah, you can see AIP 2.0 just at near the top right of, of that document. A sub-target of AIP, prepare for DIDCOM v2, sub-target of AIP 2.0, interesting. Mm. Let's see. 
Yeah, defined profiles, here we go. I think they call that a sub profile. That's the terminology they use for this. Because yeah, I was looking, there's like also like a sub profile for like the Indy credentials and DBS plus. Are you saying from, from the spec here, the defined profiles? Yeah, I think if you click on AIP 2.0 on that link, there's like different like sub profiles. Uh, AIP 2.0. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, yeah, somewhere in here, if you scroll down, like it says that uh, the different uh, sub profiles. Sub, sub targets. Yeah, sub targets. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So, yeah, like Indie Cred is like a sub target or AP2. Um, so, similar to what they have in three, AIP3 yeah. here. These, oh, okay. These correct, things. correct. We have like the different sub profiles. That's right. The way they sub target, sorry. Uh, that's the way they classify them. Yep. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, the light's coming on more. So, they're targets because this is what an implementation is trying to hit or reach. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. I was trying to bring up the. It is rather a long list, but um, I think <laughs> I think all of these <laughs> concepts and features will have something corresponding to them in uh, in DINCOM v two or AIP three both. Let's see here, Harry's working group. Okay, the meetings list. Okay. So bringing that up. Okay. Um, No discussion topics, domain validation for issuers and verifiers. Hmm. Making it possible to connect existing systems and DIDs as in an important undertaking. Bootstrapping adoption and usefulness of DIDs. Yeah, the, the, the broader concept here is, is that there are already ways um, where we feel we can trust things. For example, you can trust an email message by sending, uh, sending something to the email address and expecting some action in return. Um, or you can, um, you can use DNS to find a text record or something for a particular domain that has some, uh, uh, these are different ways of, of doing the, um, the, uh, the, the challenge response mm. um, uh, idea. And so th this was saying, let's integrate some of, the, some of the classic ways of doing challenge response into DIDCOM. Interesting. Huh. I feel like I'm not as familiar with, I'm not sure I've heard of this before or am I just blanking? <laughs> in terms the, of... uh, this was something new on the call. So I'm, I'm doing my best to, um, to recreate the spirit of, of the, the discussion <laughs> yeah. in, a, in a call that's almost a week old. So. Oh yeah, sure. Well, and uh, I can always go back and listen to it. I probably yeah, should have. Yeah, yeah that's, that's true. There, uh, there is uh, something, uh, a concept of well-known. You can put a dot well-known uh, folder okay. in, uh, on your domain. And there are various uses of that that are, that are customary. Gotcha. That, that was, I think this is, it, yeah, you can see that in, in the participate uh, uh, thing there it says decentralized identity dot well known. Mm. So, so it's using the dot well known uh, feature that's used by many mechanisms, web finger and, uh, sorry, sorry, I'm getting into some older history here, but there's, 
it's it, it's a place where um, the host of a domain can put things that they want to be well known. Yeah, it's kind of like a robot the TXT similar. <laughs> oh yeah. Right. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. Because I think that the well known is like used in the did web folder, right? That's where we put the the, the documents. Gotcha. Well -known ah. path. So like in the did web, like uh, it's usually domain slash well known slash a resource slash DID, or it's usually slash DID.json, yeah, if it's for that domain. Oh, okay. So is that part of the did web uh, method? Yeah, it's part of the did web spec. Ah, mm -hmm. ah cool. Yeah. Yep, there you go. So yeah, it's usually like if you go slash unknown slash DID.json, we get like a DID document. Yeah, but like the, the problem, I guess, like this is like, again, like as long as you trust the DNS resolution, you should be fine. Yes. Uh, if you don't trust DNS resolution, that's that's where the problem comes in. Yeah. So Sam Smith would yeah. not would not love this. <laughs> <Gotcha. Not approved. laughs> yeah, fair enough. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah, very good. And... and like I also know that there's some um, some work happening with like X509 certificates, trying to turn those into DIDs. Oh um, there's like a did X509 um, that's happening as well. Uh, yeah, for this. Uh, and I know that they're trying to, I know that um, the guys at Saffron, uh, they're trying to like kind of combine X509 and did web into like a new did method that's kind of a little bit more secure. Um, yeah, in terms of like web DID stuff, that's that's all I know. Yeah, very interesting. Are, are, are you aware that historically uh, certificates were intended to be used for individuals as well as for uh, corporations? Uh, just really? a little, a little interesting historical tidbit. So, uh, the Netscape Navigator browser was the most popular for quite a while, mm -hmm. and and they provided um, you free access to uh, to browse the web using Navigator, but you could also purchase a license and publish using Navigator. And part of part of the purchase price was uh, to obtain a certificate for you as a person. And then you would publish um, uh, web pages using the browser. Um, and of course, um, people, human nature being what it is, uh, people <laughs> used it, uh, used the free version, and very few people uh, purchased the premium service. Right. And as a result, we now live in a world where it's corporations who have certificates and individual users of browsers do not. But the intention originally was that it would be uh, a bi-directional thing, cool. the, the way it did is from conception. So it's, it's interesting uh -huh. to see them coming together again now, finally, <laughs> after all these decades. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I see. Oh, I see. It's kind of like a verify, like a credential, like a verifiable credential. So like they put it, yep. if you put it behind a paywall, right, like human nature is not incentivized to, to do it, like, right, yep. people like it free. I see. So we definitely don't want to do the same mistake. Like you want to have companies and people be on the same level. Absolutely. So companies yeah. are incentivized to pay for things. People on, are not. So like you said, human nature, it's usually the problem. It's not technology. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah. The, the hard problems yeah. are the social problems, not the technical Yeah, it's problems. people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. Thank you for the history lesson. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You're welcome. That, that was a long time ago. Fascinating. And of course, recently, uh, certificates have become free uh, with Let's yeah. Encrypt and so Let's forth. Encrypt. And, yeah. 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 But, it, but it was too little too late. Uh, I mean, the ship yeah. sailed. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, that's unfortunate, I guess. Oh, interesting. Yeah, because like now it's free. Like you can yeah, use, use Let's Encrypt. I don't know. Huh. Yeah. So yeah. like you, you, your, your point, I think, is very important, Alex. That, we must be careful not to make that mistake. Uh, with yeah. yeah, otherwise we end up doing the same thing, right? Like it's cryptographically signed and bound and all that. Like you still have the same property, but like you have to use it slightly different. That's yep. the whole point. Yeah. Yeah. Fair, fair, fair. Yeah, I mean, like hopefully computation is like cheap enough to where like people don't need to, to charge for. Uh, do you know the reasons why they did charge for that out of curiosity? I'm actually curious now. Uh, um, is it just like to make money or is it just yeah they were uh, hoping <laughs> yes yes I, 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 I yes i believe that's what it was uh, so there was netscape navigator and netscape navigator gold 
And um, I, of course, being a human being, did not purchase gold either, and so I don't really know uh, what what they offered. But yeah, I assume it was I assume it was a, to attempt to pay for all the work they had had done already to create yeah. the escape navigator. They were trying to recoup their costs, and it, it's unfortunate because mm-hmm. we, we could have had something like Didcom uh, twenty five years ago, if, if not for that. Money, the root of all evil. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so just um, knowing that history, you know, you ho- you hope you're not doomed to to repeat to the <laughs> failures, right? But uh, if you look back at that and say, well, if they had kept it all free, how would they have made money? <laughs> <laughs> That's the next question, right? You know, it's the chicken and the egg. It's it's kind of like, yeah. oh, they should have never charged for it. But you know, either way, maybe they they end up dissolving, right? Like the yeah. money. Maybe is... the internet would have never existed, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, fair. Yeah, it's uh, Sir Tim Berners Lee really deserved to be knighted because he chose not to patent or protect in any way. Uh, his invention of the three languages that make up the web, URL, HTTP, and HTML. He chose to give those to the world. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have the internet as we know it, because he chose not to take a profit. Thank you, Tim. And it it (laughs) turned out pretty well for him. So maybe maybe that's the lesson is to not uh, bolt on a commercial uh, uh, scheme. Uh, until it, it's obvious that you need it <laughs> and that it it yeah. will work. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That's uh, that, that's a great point. It's um, I mean most corporations, Wall Street um, uh, shackles them to a quarter, make a profit this mm-hmm. quarter yes. uh, philosophy. Uh, but if you take the longer view, you can do something much more useful, and in the end, more valuable. Fascinating. Okay, yeah, I'll I'll, uh, I'll, I'll save that off to the side because certainly, uh, as you know, uh, you know, Roots Idea has been open source, open standards focused, but uh, you know, it is truly a challenge. Uh, uh, we're also a company, right? We we yep. it, otherwise we'll have to go get regular jobs, uh, and so it's always interesting to consider yeah. how does how do you make money and and keep the lights on while contributing and not making the same mistake that people made 20 years ago yeah right yeah <laughs> yeah because yeah, wanna... like the business of identity is like yeah like it's already really hard like yeah the business side of things yeah, like, yeah. Uh, hmm. we'll see yeah. fascinating okay uh all right, so it does look like they mentioned something about um, the tests and Aries agent test harness. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, certainly the state of implementation should be uh, well described or well scored uh, by the test harness, assuming the test harness has all the all the right tests. So that's uh, yeah, we've talked about that, and I'm still trying to get there. Uh, yeah, I'm still trying to get good enough with the test harness uh, myself to be able to to demonstrate uh, some kind of score that's, you know, we'll say a pre AIP three uh, score, but, you know, maybe even before that uh, we've talked about, you know, did com V2 simple or, or whatever we right. want to call it a uh, score. Mm-hmm. So, okay. Very good. Um, I know well, that both you and both you and Alex are mentioned in, <laughs> um, in this, well. Yeah, yeah, we keep, uh, yeah, yeah this, couple, yeah, I'll do the this is my task. Yeah, good. Alex, remind me to uh, create a issue for this uh, on our internal the IRC, the, the web. stuff. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, OD creds require required. Oh, okay, very good. All right, we have eight more minutes. Uh, anything else that we want to discuss? for today.
I'm just looking over our previous stuff. Should we specify how the did methods like did peer are used? Uh, we are focused on did v2 uh, communication, but does the rest of the AFP community know that? I think they we do. Keep, yeah, and we keep we keep saying that at every <laughs> yeah. opportunity. Yeah. So I think yeah, we're doing a good job. I think on that wacky issuance. Do you need to be able to resolve ND checked, etc., in order to issue credential? Ah, yeah, that was a question we uh, wanted to ask and discussed sub roles. Right. We talked about the uh, the roles some. Um, any any other thoughts on that? I think that was a uh, an interesting discussion that I haven't spent much more time on. But we were talking about uh, essentially uh, breaking maybe the issuer a role into multiple issuer type roles to capture uh, sub parts of of a protocol. Any other thoughts on that? We we had uh, we had said that you could either do uh, more fine grained roles or you could do more fine grained protocols. You know, essentially these sub protocols and have kind of the the larger you know credential issuance protocol be uh, a set of sub protocols. I was I was going to just say that. Um, um, that I have experience using very simple issuers and and holders. So I think, I, am I annotating your view as well by drawing that line? Oh yeah, you did. Um, so so this is this is what I use, uh, and then I just do that. The issuer just up and and issues a credential by displaying a QR code. Um, in a place where the holder can see it, and then the holder receives it, and that's it. Yeah. And there's no acknowledgement. There's no. There's no preamble. It's just there, and they receive it. And then similarly on the present proof side, um, uh, a proof request is presented, and the holder responds using their phone agent, and 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 it's finished. So uh, last last week when we we talked about this briefly, I was thinking, wow, I didn't realize it was so complicated. Yeah, and I think that um, this is natural. The the the, the to start here, uh, and so I feel like that should be specified. But when we mention that. Um, I guess I could see how when when they've planned, you know, this more elaborate um, protocol, each piece has value. And so to <laughs> say, <laughs> to say, well, can we have something, you know, lesser, it, it's uh, maybe tough to swallow or maybe that's, um, I don't know, maybe there's some wisdom there to be had, but I feel like there's also wisdom in what do people actually do? <laughs> yes, right, exactly, <laughs> that, that, that's why I brought it up. Yeah. I, I, I had a need uh, for an issuer to, to get a credential into a holder's wallet, and so yeah. that's what I did. <laughs> right, yeah, totally fair. And, and similar for you, Alex, right? When you guys, uh, when JFF was yeah. doing, doing things. Yeah, I guess like to me, uh, again, like I already like said my two cents on the on the like sub protocols slash the sub profiles. Like to me, it makes sense to have like like at the protocol level. Let's keep them calling protocols. Like issue and simple. You just like send a message, right? Like it's just mm -hmm. one message. Like like you said, without the acknowledgement, there's like a then there's like a simple with act, right? And then then you have yeah. like simple with request, and like simple with proposal, simple with offer. Or like you have like a full uh, that has like, you know, you can issue multiple credentials, you can request multiple credentials before issuing a credential. Like those are different flows in my mind. Like That's... to me, it's like we either have like small ones that add mm -hmm. up to the big one, or you have the big one and you break it down into small ones at the protocol cool. level. But like trying to break down like what messages, uh, I feel like we don't usually do that for other protocols. 
right? Like you would like basic messages, like you wouldn't, like if you create a chat message, like you wouldn't say, hey, I'm only implementing this role of this chat protocol, like you would use a different chat protocol. Um, uh, yeah. yeah like great. you, the exchanging of like setting up a chat can be different between different chats and whatnot, but like the messages themselves can be like similar. So those can be different like chat apps per se, right? Like, or whatnot. So those would be different protocol. Like that's the way I think about it. It's like before sending messages, like in a chat, like you need to authenticate people, like uh, whatever, like you gotta send a selfie or like you don't have to send anything, right? Like, uh, or like you need to have a credential to like set up a, a chat with Bitcoin, stuff like that. But those would be all different like chat protocols in my mind. You don't have like a chat protocol and like have different setup mechanisms. At least that's the way I, I think about it. Like it makes more sense to me that way. Yeah, that, but yeah, it's still very new. That that makes a lot of sense. It just occurred to me that um, that one could add arrows like this without even leaving the two dimensional plane. Yeah. To say this is an acceptable use, but I really like what you said, Alex, about do we build it up or from the small pieces or do we do we put these sneak sneak paths in the complex diagram? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we're just almost out of time, but uh, I, I feel like I understood uh, about 85% of what you said, Alex, but um, I felt like you were saying that you like sub protocols yeah, as useful for, building like... blocks for a yeah. greater protocol. Mm hmm um yeah i don't like to think about like individual messages within the protocol i don't uh, but yeah that's the part that uh, i guess i was confused about i don't like to think about individual messages but so i i in my my brain is having trouble uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh making what do sense I mean by that? yeah of of um, you know if you are breaking it down into sub protocols what do you mean that you don't like to think about it as individual messages right i like to think about them like a sub protocol and like not messages themselves like even if like the protocol like issue credential simple is just like one send credential like the send issue credential message yeah that's still a protocol it's not just a message right that's a protocol yeah. that's what i mean by that yeah. now, like, with, then if with, you want to send the send credential with the act that's a different protocol yeah, that, that, would, that, would, that, would, that would be connection. that would be taking this path so uh, or, or not oh I, would, I, for, I forgot to draw on that one yeah for, for that guy yeah. would that protocol be these two messages <laughs> together the send issue credential and receive issue <clears throat> credential store payload right like yeah, yeah yes. okay. that would yeah, be okay. one protocol yes. and like another gotcha. one can just be just the send issue credential right like and so you're sending a issue credential can be a protocol technically so so the roles would stay the same but there would just be a set of protocols that are smaller that you could right. put together yeah. in order to kind of do this entire flow yeah right. i i, I yeah. totally agree that that makes the most sense to me because the roles are always going to be the same there's always all the issue and verifier like those roles like usually never change like it's always like a one-to-one -one conversation yeah. for now uh so like i guess like we haven't dealt with whenever you have like multi-party protocols like computation like when you have like multiple people and like you need to resolve multiple messages that's like not just two parties usually like how do you go about splitting messages that way right like that gets i don't even know how you go about that right yeah so yeah yeah that's that's yeah that, that's a harder problem yeah I, I i like that point of view alex that's, that's yeah cool. yeah great Okay, we're out of time. Great, great meeting. Uh, and yeah, we'll meet again next week. And mm -hmm. I'll, I'll try to uh, attend the, the Aries AFJ. working group meeting. Yeah, and, and AFJ meeting this week. Great. Good to see you all. Thank Take you for coming. Take care. Talk to you Bye. later. Bye. Bye.